And no one points out the kind of underlying irony is that here you have two of the most powerful people in the world, in Oprah Winfrey and Meghan Markle, both claiming to be victims. They're oppressed. They have more power than you. They got you fired, but you're oppressing them. The strong pretending to be weak in order to crush people below them. Does anyone notice this dynamic? Well, it's, it's completely absurd, frankly, and I've written about this regularly for the Daily Mail, about the ludicrous hypocrisy of this couple who, by the way, contrary to what many Americans have been led to believe, the, the press coverage of these two right up to the wedding was un completely over-the-top euphoric. Everyone in Britain was thrilled that finally we were having uh, a non-white bride in the royal family. It hadn't happened. We were all very happy about this. I wrote about how wonderful it was on the wedding day. So this narrative that from the start she was bombarded with horrible, hateful, racist press coverage is another disingenuous load of nonsense. But really where this leaves us is that you've got this concept that somehow Meghan Markle, who married into one of the richest, most privileged families in the world, and within a couple of years has gone back to her home in California, is living in an $11 million mansion, is doing all <laughs> sorts of enormous deals with Netflix, Spotify, you name it. They're taking the checks, hundreds of millions we read. And how are they getting those, Tucker? They're getting them because they're the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. They're getting them off their royal titles. The royal titles bestowed on them by the very institution that in the interview with Oprah Winfrey, they say they, they can't stand and is suffocating and traps them and so on and so on. Well, you can't have it both ways. If you really believe that way about the royal family and the monarchy, give up your titles, but they won't do that because it makes them too much money. So now you have these two oppressed people living in a mansion in California, earning hundreds of millions of dollars, in the middle of a pandemic that's killed nearly three million people, portraying themselves as the biggest victims in the world and doing it to Oprah Winfrey, their great friend who was at their wedding and is their neighbor. I love Oprah. She did my first show at CNN and I'll always be grateful to her. And she's a wonderful interviewer and entertainer. But this wasn't really an interview. This was her allowing two friends the platform to spray gun Britain, the monarchy, the royal family, the queen, Prince William's wife, you name it, they took them down. And that's fine. That's their decision. It's their life. They can do what they want. But to do it when you're still calling yourselves Duke and Duchess of Sussex, I'm sorry, that is rank hypocrisy. And I think there's a lot of anger in Britain, which may not be understood in America, uh, but a lot of anger building in Britain towards what happened in that interview, towards the very ugly smearing of our queen, particularly at a time when her husband, Prince Philip, who's 99, was fighting for his life in hospital. Everything about this was tacky, tasteless, disingenuous, and I'm afraid, I believe, in some cases, downright lying on a global scale.